easy to trigger infinite combos, hilarious card interactions, and the perfect way to upset all your friends while doing ridiculous things. This is my commander deck tech for Prime Speaker Vanifar. You're gonna love it. Click the first link in the description if you want to see the entire list, but before you do that, sit back, relax, and enjoy the madness. I do hope you like this video, and if you do, remember hit that like button. Helps out a lot. Prime Speaker Vanifar is two of anything, one green and one blue for a 2-4 legendary creature elf ooze wizard. You tap and sacrifice another creature to search your library for a creature card with converted mana cost equal to one, plus the sacrifice creature's converted mana cost, put that card onto the battlefield and shuffle your library, activate only at sorcery speed. So this is birthing pot on a stick, but with one major difference. Vanifar's ability doesn't cost a single mana to activate. Simply tapping her and sacrificing a creature will do, and that's how this deck gets so outrageous. Hope you're ready to climb I'm a ladder of creatures, oh baby. So let's say we get the Prime Speaker onto the battlefield and ready to go. Let's sacrifice a Llanowar Elves to go grab a Scrib Ranger. Then we can return a forest to our hand to untap the Prime Speaker. Wow, that's convenient. Then we tap her and sacrifice the Scrib Ranger to grab Deceiver Exarch. Exarch enters the battlefield and untaps Vanifar. So then we sacrifice the Exarch to get Breaching Hippocamp, allowing us to untap Vanifar. That's convenient. Then we sacrifice our Horse Fish to get Disciple of the Ring, Exile an Instant or in our graveyard to untap Vanifar, then sacrifice the Disciple to get Great O Guardian, which enters the battlefield untapping Vanifar again. So we sacrifice the Guardian to get Protean Hulk. Then all we need to do is untap Vanifar one more time to sacrifice Protean Hulk, grab Patron of the Orochi, Protean Hulk triggers. We go into our deck and get a Zuri Claw of Progress, Sage of Hours, Memnite, Phyrexian Marauder, Phyrexian Walker, and Shifting Wall. Remember, the Hulk lets us get creatures with total converted mana cost six or less. And those four artifacts have no converted mana cost. Everything enters the battlefield at the same time. Azuri triggers on each of the other five creatures that enter the battlefield. Doesn't matter that the X cost creatures will die immediately. They enter the battlefield as zero zeros. Azuri gets five counters, go to combat. Azuri gives those counters to Sage of Hours. You remove the counters from Sage of Hours and take another turn. Next turn, give the Azuri counters to Sage of Hours, take another turn. Boom, infinite turns. Oh, I know, it's hilarious. After you have infinite turns, turns you need a way to win. Laboratory Maniac is one of the coolest ways to win in all of Magic. Take extra turns until you draw your deck, have the Maniac on the battlefield, game over, you win, everyone hates you, easy as pie. Now, there's obviously some vulnerability here. We need more cards that untap Vanifar so we can get Protean Hawk sacrificed right away. Starting from the bottom of our creature curve, all fetchable with Vanifar, we have Kyrian and Ranger that returns for us to your hand to untap Vanifar. Kiora's Follower is pretty straightforward, same with Seeker of Skybreak. Bounding Crisis and Pestermite are alternatives to Deceiver Exarch when you're potting upwards and need to keep the chain going. Vizier of Tumbling Sands can stick on the battlefield to help, or you can cycle it for a single use untap, very useful when trying to ditch Hulk. Fate Stitcher is a four mana untap, and Chakram Retriever is an alternative to Disciple of the Ring if you have a spell in your hand to cast to trigger the untap. Then at the top of the alternate curve, we have Woodland Bellower. This creature enters the battlefield and doesn't technically untap Vanifar, but it does grab Bounding Krasis or Scrib Ranger or Kyrian Ranger, and they can do it in instead, allowing you to start your pod chain anew. As you can see, there's a lot of redundancy in this pod chain. There has to be for the deck to work correctly. We need more ways to start the Vanifar fun party. It isn't enough to have a handful of creatures at the bottom of our curve. We need enough to guarantee that we'll see something we can use. Boreal Druid and Finehorn Elves are going to be additional sacrificial one drops. Priest of Titania is a suitable two drop. All of these cards functioning as mana ramp until they're sacrificed, which is important. The sooner we can get Vanifar active, the better. Now we're also running some unusual tech to really push our pod agenda. Zoetic Cavern is a way to get the chain started via Morphland. That's if we're desperate or really just don't want to get rid of anything we have on the battlefield at the moment. And then Genesis Chamber. This card's amazing, allowing us to create two pod chains simultaneously. When you sacrifice your podded creature, you get a token you can sacrifice to grab a one mana creature and start all over again. With something like Scrib or Kyrian Ranger on the battlefield, you can easily untap enough to climb the ladder twice considering the amount of redundant untappers we have. Nothing more fun than climbing twice, I'm just saying. It'd be short-sighted for us not to include some key pod targets in Eternal Witness and Manglehorn. Eternal Witness can bring anything back that you want, which certainly matters when you're trying to win via ridiculous combo. If a card you need gets put into the graveyard, pod to Witness. She'll get it back for you no must, no fuss. Then Manglehorn is simply one of the best anti-artifact cards for a deck like this. You can pot it up in a pinch and it'll annoy your opponents for the rest of the game or until they kill it, either of which you're fine with. Use their removal on this, not on the important creatures. 
We don't have enough ways to untap Vanifar with our podchain creatures alone. We obviously need more ways to do it for the deck to be consistent enough to make everyone hate you on a daily basis. Thornbite staff is particularly spicy after it's equipped. Whenever a creature is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, untap equipped creature. This artifact alone removes the need to get untappers through the pod chain. Easy peasy. Thousand Year Elixir not only untaps a creature in a pinch, but also importantly lets your creatures activate abilities as though they had haste, which means Kiora's Follower, Fate Stitcher, Vizier of Tumbling Sand, Seeker of Skybreak. All of these now untap Vanifar as soon as they enter the battlefield. Staff of Domination isn't nearly as powerful as Thousand Year Elixir, but it does untap a creature, and when you're taking infinite turns, you can draw your deck faster, untap the staff, untap creatures, draw more cards, you get it. Then we have Trophy Mage, the beautiful three-cost artifact tutor that can go get the elixir or the staff. Nice card to pot into if you need help assembling the nonsense. We're also running Intruder Alarm because this is one of the single best cards in the deck, especially with Genesis Chamber, untapping Vanifar faster than you can use her. Totally nuts. Then we have a bunch of spell support that'll make it easier to use both Chakram Retriever and Disciple of the Ring. Cerulean Wisps untaps Vanifar and draws a card. Vitalize is as cheap as it can be. Benefactor's Draw untaps all creatures and you can trip. Then Dramatic Reversal untaps all of your non-lands. Even more ways to make sure Vanifar can get off and running. Giving Vanifar haste or some way to activate abilities immediately is the best chance this combo has to go off immediately. We've already spoken about Thousand Year Elixir, but we're also running Concordant Crossroads and Swiftfoot Boots. The Crossroads is an old card that gives everything haste, which is just fine with us. Ideally, you wouldn't cast this until right before you're about to go off with Vanifar. Card is excellent here, and it synergizes with the Vizier, Seeker, Fate, Stitcher, you get it. Then Swiftfoot Boots is just a great card. In addition to granting Hex Proof, which makes this card infamously strong, the haste is something we can abuse on another card enabling Vanifar to go off right away. We're not including Lightning Greaves in the deck because Shroud actually kills our combo. If we can't target Vanifar with our untapped spells and abilities, then there's no way to go off. I never thought I'd say this, but Greaves just not great right here. I've covered a lot of cards that we want to see in this deck, so we need ways to get them. Vanifar can't do all the work herself. Eldritch Evolution is fantastic here, allowing us to pod for something a single time. We could get an untap or an important toolbox card. There's a lot of versatility here, and that's what matters. We're also running Muddle the Mixture. It is a fine counter spell, but it's here to transmute into the elixir, the staff, or laboratory maniac. Whichever you need at the precise moment you need it, I love transmute. After that, we're running a host of card draw and card filter spells. Brainstorm, Factor Fiction, Ponder, and Preordain. Not the flashiest cards in the world, but they're all cheap. They dig through the deck, they trigger Chakram Retriever, and put something in the bin for Disciple of the Ring, so basically I'm square with all these. All combo decks are vulnerable somewhere. We don't like removal, we don't like counter magic, so we're running a bunch of our own. Remember, we're trying to take infinite turns immediately, which means we don't care about the side effects of counter spells. Swan Song and Arcane Denial are fantastic in this deck. We're also running Counter Spell, Negate, Disallow, and one of my personal favorites, Disappearing Act. Cards hysterical. You counter a spell and bring something back to your hand that you need later. Maybe Eternal Witness, maybe even Vanifar to avoid commander tax. Disappearing Act is great and super underplayed. In case we don't have counter spells available, Simic Charm blankets the team with Hexproof, or Unsummon something important, and Rapid Hybridization turns any bothersome creature into a frog lizard. This is a solid package of disruption and shielding for a combo deck like this. For some added insurance, we are running Flash. Infamous because of its amazing interaction with Protean Hawk, Flash is just another way to get infinite turns going. Not relying entirely on Vanifar is okay. Flash lets us put Protean Hawk onto the battlefield, let it die immediately, and grab our entire combo for the low, low cost of two man at instant speed. Tell me that isn't brutal. Dude at the end of your opponent's turn, becomes your turn, oof, get wrecked. Then, when all is said and done, if you need any of these amazing spells back, just pot up our Man. Enter the battlefield ability means that you can Vanifar it up and get back something you need to maybe untap Vanifar again or grab a used counter for an upcoming turn. It's a solid include. Vanifar is four mana and we're also going to need mana to cast counters and other powerful shenanigans. Soul Ring, Felwar Stone, Simic, Signa, and Simic Key Rune. All solid ramp and fixing artifacts. They're joined by Ramp and Growth, Cultivate, and Kodama's Reach. We need to get as many lands on the battlefield as soon as possible, especially Forest, since our Scribbid Kyrian Ranger function off returning Forest to our hand. After that, we're running a host of dual lands to ensure color fixing health. Lumbering Falls is a pod target in a pinch. Then Simic Growth Chamber, Temple of Mystery for some scry, Thornwood Falls for life, Woodland Stream because the art's pretty, Yavi Maya Coast, Vivid Creek and Vivid Grove. Terramorphic Expanse and Evolving Wilds grab us forest. Breeding Pool is a forest. Then we have 13 more forests and 10 islands to round out the 35 land mana base. Prime Speaker Vanifar is an incredibly powerful commander and she's going to have a long reign as a strong and infamous Simic leader. But before that reputation, is set in stone. Take advantage. Buy this deck, build it, play it against your friends or commander group. They will have no idea what's coming and probably won't have a way to fight it that you can't deal with. The deck is intuitive, flexible,
flexible, versatile, you name it. This version of Prime Speaker Vanifar is the bomb to play in the best part. This busted deck is only around $150 right now. I don't think it's going to stay there for long, so if there are any pieces of this that you need, pick them up. Trust me, the deck is really fun to play and a breath of fresh air in the Commander format. Think Yisan, but stronger. Anyways, let me know what you think about this Vanifar deck in the comments. Would love to hear your thoughts and stay tuned for more Ravnica Legion's content as the set release draws closer. And as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. This video is brought to you in part by TCGPlayer.com. Prime Speaker Vanifar is one of the coolest commanders I've ever seen and this deck is awesome. One of the best cards in this deck is Concordant Crossroads. You'll want to get this as soon as possible if you want to play this deck and the Chronicles version of the card is only $15 right now. Might seem like a lot, but it's a card that hasn't been printed in over 20 years. Click the link on the screen to get yourself a copy before it goes nuts. Helps the channel. We all would enjoy.